Okay, okay. How are we going? Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hope you can hear me. Hope everything's okay. Hope the signal's coming through nice and clear. Uh, I'm back on reverse camera just to talk tech for a second. And I'm looking at myself here. So it looks like it all looks good. Um, so I hope everything's going well. Muzman, Jerry, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Uh, happy Friday. Uh, happy Friday to you all. Um, happy Friday, Malt Day, whatever you want to call it. Friday, Whiskey Fridays. Um, it's a short week this week. Everyone had, We had a public holiday here in New South Wales uh, in, on Monday, which was lovely. And I, uh, this is the first time I've had a long weekend and really, um, really done nothing, which has been fantastic. Um, 45 Finn, good to see you, mate. And uh, Just Dramming, thanks for joining. Uh, Whiskey Sec, thanks for joining. Always good to see some of my, uh, my favorites, some of my regulars coming in, joining in. And um, we've got a, I've got a really interesting topic to talk about tonight. And it's a bit sort of... Um, it's a bit of a meta topic, I should say. It's a bit like one of those ones that sort of looking in the mirror sort of topics, but um, it's going to be quite useful for us to talk about because I've been asked this question. Uh, this is probably in the top three, not probably. This is actually in the top three of questions I get asked quite often. Tommy KMC, Muzz Man, happy Jeremy Friday indeed. Muzz, I hope you've got a drama something. Boom. Um, <laughs> yeah, by next week, look, next week actually... Um, Actually, just dramming, uh, whilst I've got you on that, on that point, um, evening Tommy, yes, uh, whilst I've got you on that point, um, just dramming, all these bottles will be gone next week. Uh, they'll be gone by Thursday at the latest, probably Wednesday, uh, because it's Archie Rose pop-up bar next week. Um, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, I'm going to see if I can attempt a live stream from the bar. If I've got someone helping me out, I'll be able to duck out and do a quick one, but, um, I'm doing a three, we're doing three nights at Archie Rose, 4 p.m. till close. I think they close at midnight. Um, Mari, I hope to see you there every night. Um, uh, Niraj 24P, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a full triple night um, pop-up bar at Archie Rose that kicks off next week. We've also got the, we're doing a whiskey blending class again on the Saturday, and that's on the Archie Rose Experiences side of their website, the events page for, the, for Archie Rose. You can grab tickets through there. Uh, and um, yeah, hope to see you all at Archeros Pop next week. That'll be fun. We're taking over the whole upstairs mezzanine bar. All these bottles, uh, anything, any bottle that has any whiskey in it at all is gone, is on the bar. Um, so if you feel like a dram of uh, a cigar juice next, uh, next Thursday night, come and join me. Buy it by the dram. Don't have to, if you're not keen on spending $650 on a bottle, come and get a dram of it. Uh, it'd be really attractively priced as well. You can order everything by the half dram as well. Uh, which is going to be heaps of fun. Hansa Malt, thanks for joining. And right now I've got a, just a lovely bit of a, a Society 46 code. Ah, there's something about these lossies, just really grassy, but in a good way, like old, you know, like sort of like leathery and grassy and clean and delightful, like like uh, all sort of malted barley notes. And Anyway. We'll come back to that whiskey. It's needing a bit of time to open up, and it might appreciate not even another drop of water. I got sidetracked, and by the way, uh, for when Dr. Akers tunes in later on, um, I've got a uh, an actual writing implement now on the table, um, which is exciting. It's a pencil. How exciting is this? This is what my Friday sessions come down to. It even, it, but it's a branded pencil. Look at that. It's even got it's even got Scotch Bolt Whiskey Society written on the pencil. Uh, we don't have these in Australia, but I, I pinched a few from the meeting room at, um, at Leith. So anyone who's watching in the UK, um, thank you for letting me steal two pencils. Um, so, uh, yeah, when Archie is your local, you should spend more time there than you should. You do, yeah, you, you do spend, you spend more time there than you should. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very relaxing bar. It's a very, um, well-priced bar as well. It's unbelievably good value to drink at Archie Rose. And it's also a fantastic partner bar. For those wondering, if you're a member of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, they swipe your membership card, you get 20% off your whole drinks bill every time you're there. So if you go there three times in the year, your membership's paid for itself. I love our partner bars, they're so supportive. Okay, let's move on to the topic I wanted to touch on tonight, and I'd love to see your feedback, your questions and, and comments as we do this as well. So I've been asked about this question, the question I'm about to pose to you, I've been asked probably close to 300 times in the last uh, five years. I've been with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society now for four and a bit years, so celebrating four years and two months um, this month, uh, which is great. 
uh, and I'm loving every part of being a uh, being part of the society and being part of the risky fabric the society creates in Australia. Um, the one question I've been asked probably more than any is, yeah, or at least a lot is, how do I get a job like yours? How do I work in whiskey? How do I sort of, and how do I go about it? And it's not necessarily just the ambassadorial work that they're interested in. They're wondering how they can get a job in whiskey because it's sort of like, oh, there's people who work in whiskey. And I always say that that missing ingredient that no one ever talks about in whiskey is the people. It's the people that make it. It's the people who make whiskey. It's barley farmers. It's all the way from people who who grow barley uh, all the way to people who um, sell it at duty free. There's there's a, there's so many roles in whiskey. So I'll, I'll talk about this just for a moment because I find this stuff really interesting. So. Someone wants to say to me they want to work in whiskey. They want to learn what it means to be to to work in the whiskey industry. First point is the first thing you've got to knock off, which is there's five things I want to cover here. First of all is what um, what kind of role do you think you're best suited to in whiskey? So often they say I want to be an ambassador and I want to talk about the category. I want to talk about spirit and I want to talk about great whiskey. That's fantastic if you do because there's always like you know people love being ambassadors and I, and I love talking to people who are ambassadors in whiskey. But then some of those same people, if I'm being completely honest, they say, oh, well, uh, oh, I want to work in whiskey and I want to be an ambassador, but I, uh, I'm really bad at public speaking or I really don't, oh, I don't like talking in front of a crowd. Uh, I'm the opposite of that. For those who've ever been to any of my events, I don't get nervous at events. I, I love doing it. I, I get a thrill out of it. Yeah, sure, my heart rate goes up sometimes and it depends on the format of the event. I'll be honest, you know, something at the Vault 1682 dinner that we did a couple of weeks ago, three, three weeks ago, whatever it was now, um, in Sydney, that was a you know that was a remarkable evening that required a lot of preparation and a lot of stressing over the, the format and the, the layout and the tasting order and the menus and the content in the menus and the actually getting these casks and procuring them from different directors and there's a lot going on in that event. So that was a high stress event. But then again, you know, some, put me in a whiskey party room with the society for uh, 150 of our members. Love it, I love it. And by the way, our whiskey parties are coming up. Um, so, you know, Melbourne and Sydney dates are already confirmed. Sydney, Friday the 6th of December, and Melbourne, Saturday the 7th of December. So save those dates. Um, Caltay, good to see you. Friday Night Drams. Yes, what we're talking about. Um, yeah, okay, that's a really good point, Alex. So I'll just cover off for Cal and a few others who have joined in. We're talking about that question I get, the, one of the top three questions I get asked most commonly is, how do I get a job in whiskey? And I've been asked that probably, you know, like I say, 300 times in the last four years. Uh, and I find it fascinating and it's it's often, so I'll talk a few about those points. So the first one is you need to identify what kind of role you're best at. If you want to be an ambassador for the category, you do need to have a bit of sort of, not a bit, you need to have a lot of sort of that people power in, in terms of just like being good at working a room, setting up a room, uh, engaging with members, engaging with patrons and of all types and especially reading the room and getting a feel for what people are getting into. If you're nerding out too much and people are sort of tuning out, or if you're being too general and people, there's sort of, you know, some of the more hardcore whiskey drinkers in the room going, oh, we want to learn about washbacks and <laughs> and fill strengths and, and cask types. Because sometimes you, you, you've got to read the room and, and what people are interested in, what they're catching onto. And a lot of that is body language. A lot of that is sort of reading the body language in the room and reading what people are sort of, you know, what they're saying and just catching the in-between messages in the rooms. And if I... Here's an example for you. I remember toasting a tasting uh, about um, two years ago, uh, or maybe even three years ago now, and I was talking about single cask whiskies and single cask society casks, and I overheard a conversation on one of the tables of someone saying, this is at a, a mostly non-members event, and I heard someone, one of our corporate bookings, and I, uh, I heard someone asking someone else on the table, what's the difference between a single malt and a blend? And as soon as I heard that in the background, they were asking someone else on the table. They didn't feel like they had the, not what everyone likes to ask questions to the ambassador, but they felt like asking around the table and that's fine. But I realized straight away that the understanding of the category and understanding of whiskey in general, I was going a little bit too advanced for that crowd. So I just adjusted my pitch. You need to sort of adjust and really be quite nimble on those, those sort of things. Um, Alex, you're right. Sorry, I'm just going back through some of the comments. Classic extrovert versus introvert characteristics. I'm with you, mate. Extrovert, but uh, um, get my energy from the room. Yes, that's true. I'll be honest. If you talk to me in the sort of the one hour before I start a tasting, I'll probably just give you a grunt in response sometimes. I'm known to do that where sort of someone says, oh, I'm really looking forward to tonight. And I'll be like, oh, yes, okay, yeah, okay, whatever. 
and not quite that bad, but you know, I sort of, I just need that build up. And as soon as I've got it going, like even tonight, even when I do my live streams, like I'm, I'm sort of a bit like it's 7.55, I'm a bit like, uh, live stream in five. Ah, okay, okay, here we go, this is exciting. What am I doing again? And then it's like eight o'clock, bam. You just gotta switch on, you gotta have that switch on characteristic, I think, for, for doing it. Jimmy, I really appreciate that comment. That uh, event was uh, effing on point though. I'm not gonna, uh, I won't swear in front of my audience. But that event was a lot of fun. Um, and you know, I just really enjoyed it. Uh, whiskey, uh, whiskey Pella, thanks for joining Sally. SNWS UK. Uh, SNWS UK, I just wanna thank you again for letting me steal a couple of branded pencils from last time we met. Um, Swagasm, Whiskey Waffle, look at all these people, fantastic. Calte, um, <laughs> cask types and washes, that's the Melbourne crowd. Yeah, actually, it's funny, like I say, yeah, the crowd, actually, I'll give you a tip, Cal, that is the Melbourne crowd, but if you want the really nerdy questions, and the one that I have to research the most for, for certain casks, um, would have to be, uh, I dare I say, the Wollongong audience, uh, out in um, three hours out of, well, no, it's three hours, hour and a half out of Sydney, the Wollongong audience are a, um, they're a proper nerdy branch. As if, for those who are regulars who have been watching the live stream, Norman Case, the um, the founder of a Single Malt Whiskey in Australia in many ways uh, and a true driving influence. And Andrew has spoken to me recently and said that he'd love to do a live stream soon and talk and focus on Norman, which I think is a beautiful idea. So Andrew's going to be doing a live stream soon. We'll announce it in the stories as usual. But um, yeah, sit next to Rob and Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, so that's the first tip. My, there's five tips on how to it work in the whiskey industry. The first tip is discover what kind of role you want. There's roles like ambassadors, like I've just been talking about, brand managers, um, you know, designers, uh, travel retail, bartending, uh, whiskey bars, um, uh, whiskey travel, t- whiskey tour companies. There's there's all sorts. If you're if you're interested in tourism, and you love whiskey. There's a, there's a meeting of minds, isn't it? It's like, oh, I'm good at tourism. I'm good at sort of running tours, and and oh, I um, I love whiskey. I could do a whiskey tour. So there's there's all sorts of things in the industry that are uh, the usable. You could be an independent bottler, you, like the SMWS started as. You could start a syndicate. You could you know like a, like Pip did. There's you know there's all sorts of things that uh, there's all sorts of roles, and it's not just being the ambassador. We're just the loudest. You know, you see us the most. Um, the second t- the so the first tip is discover what kind of role you're after. The second tip is, um, this, uh, yeah, it's just sort of, you know, um, no, that was the first, that was, sorry, I'm still on the first. Talking about what kind of role you're after. Ambassadors, brand managers, designers, event hosts, uh, you know, dre- um, event dressers. There's lots of people who work in different parts of the trade from bartending all the way over to whiskey, pardon me, whiskey tours and um, uh, independent bottlers. Know what kind of thing, what part of the industry you're most interested in. And that leads me on to my second point. Yes, find, yeah, it's a really good point, actually, there, Muzz. Find a nexus of passions slash interest and whiskey. Passion, interest, and whiskey. But I believe in passion, uh, but passion doesn't get the work done. And I don't want to go too much onto this and sound like um, some old man with losing his mind and his teeth going, got it out of hard work. I, what I mean is it's sort of like you, you, do have to, it's, you do have to put the work in, and it's a lot of hours no matter what, and especially early on if you're really trying to get into it. Um, which is, leads me to my second point. This is the second one. Get involved. Absolutely get involved. Put yourself in every scenario and keep an open mind. As in, keep your ears open. Um, keep your ears open. Meet people. Go to, a, go to as many events as you can. Little events at your local bottle shop. Uh, with just some, even some events with your friends. Just invite them around for some drinks. Uh, invite around people who work in the trade. They often appreciate it. I get invited to little whiskey tastings with groups uh, around Australia quite often, and it's fantastic. And you get to talk to them on a sort of more sort of, just like a, rather than in a group audience, like a, as an ambassador, more just as a person to person, and it's lovely. Um, go to events though, go to events, go to bars, go to great whiskey bars. When you travel around Australia at all, make an effort to go to the great whiskey bars in those cities or towns. Even small towns have some great whiskey bars. And you'll learn and meet a lot by, by the people who run those bars, the bartenders behind it, and, and the events they even host. And just show face and contribute, listen, listen, listen. And just like listen to those around you of who works in the trade, and you'll learn so much. You'll discover so much about how it all comes together. And that really is like uh, one of the, one of the meat, probably the meat in the sandwich of this whole discussion, is if you want to work in it, just absorb as much as you can from so many and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound like an old fud here again, but um, 
I'd say you need to listen from about 20% internet and 80% real life. So there's some people too I see trying to get into the whiskey industry, but they never turn up to any events. They're not part of any sort of community. They don't create. They're not part of any whiskey club or any uh, anything like that. It's it's merely just like oh I'm I. I make a lot of chatter online, and I want to be, you know, it's like, and that's great, but it's 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 missing the it's missing the meat and the pie, and the meat and the sandwich, which is the getting out there and learning from a multitude of sources, not just like one Facebook group or just one sort of source. So, in in the society's example, what that would mean is, yes, you can learn a lot of our our blog online. You can learn a lot from um, talking to us online. These chats, these are great. I'm saying don't go online, and I'm you're to, I'm talking to you on Instagram. I understand the irony of my statement. But I also mean, just it needs to be contributed to with the actual real life uh, tastings, events, and and being a part of the community. And just keep your ears absolutely open. You, you don't even need to say much in the early days. Just learn from everyone around you and absorb as much as you can. Um, uh, the third point, and as I get into the third, sorry, Cal, um, I'll have to check if that's gone up yet on YouTube, uh, last night's stream. I'll check that out, sorry. Um, uh, there's a couple of streams that I've done that don't go up line, uh, just because they weren't, either weren't great nights, or uh, there was one where we had Alex tune in, Alex Moore's tune in, uh, and he talked with me on that one. When you have someone on as a guest, it doesn't allow you to save the video. Isn't Instagram fantastic? Um, okay, so the next, the third point I wanna make is taste, assess, critique, discover, and keep notes. Now, I don't have mine on, in, on hand at the moment, but you know I'll use this as an example over here. Um, in the early, in the, in your, especially in your early days of learning about whiskey, and I still use one. I've got an orange uh, notebook over there, some on the table. Um, keep a notebook. So taste as many whiskies as you can. Don't write anything off. If someone offers you a Johnny Walker Red Label, taste it, assess it, make notes on it. Ta- you know, understand what it is. If someone offers you a fifty-year-old Speyside whiskey that's delicious, delightful, and old and rare, taste it and assess it just as you would. And keep notes. Write tasting. Write your own tasting notes, and start digging into what those other tasting notes are. As in, like, to start discovering how to properly taste whiskey rather than just drinking whiskey. How to appreciate whiskey rather than drinking whiskey. This is something that Andrew talked about the other night as well. And you can catch Andrew's uh, full length "How to Get the Most Out of Your Dram" on our YouTube channel. Um, so that's that's a longer form video, of course. And um, uh, yes, so keep notes. Keep notes on what you're enjoying, what you like in a whiskey, what you don't like, and your palate will change and you can come back and read your notes. And when you wrote a note in 2009, like I once did, writing about Glenmorangie Original, then you taste it again in 20, 2019, and you can compare. You can go back and say, wow, I don't get the same kind of notes as I did back then. Your palate's changed, the whiskey's likely changed a bit as well. Not too much though, more likely your palate. Oh, it's opened up lovely, that's a lovely note now. So that's a nosing whiskey. I could, that's the kind of whiskey you could just nose all night. Mm, that's a 40, SMWS 46, uh, for those wondering. A second number, I, I can't remember. Um, I, I've sort of, um, the, my, fourth, my fourth point was learn from those around you. That sort of ties into my second point about sort of, you know, contribute and listen and, and add value to, to, the, to what you want to do to get into the trade, to, to start working in it. Um, so I won't really bang on about that one too much. And my fifth and final point about this tonight is write, write, write. As in writing, as in writing. Not just tasting notes, write about your experiences in whiskey. Write a story about uh, about whiskey. Write um, about a topic in whiskey that interests you. Whether it be, I, I've recently written articles for both Outturn, Unfiltered, and other third-party magazines, including um, CEO Magazine, um, Forbes online. I've written some recent, recently written some articles, and you just go, um, just keep writing. Always, be, always find some time to write and read. So, reading great books on whiskey. I talked about whiskey books the other night. I said, you know, beginners might want to start with the Jim Murray Whiskey Bible, and we've just released that Founder's Tale, which is a great, fantastic story on whiskey, and how it's not just the society. It was sort of uh, how single malt, how Pip Hills changed single malt around the world. Read books and, and write yourself. Are you a terrible writer? I don't care. Keep writing. You get, only get better by doing things. You only get better by doing it. So um, keep doing it and keep writing about it. And that and that adds people will start reading what you're writing. Uh, as as especially they've done with people like our cellar master Andrew, 
with his whiskey and wisdom blog is widely read uh, overseas and in Australia. He tells me, and it's like, and you discover these amazing flavors in 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 your whiskey journey that you get to write about, and you can nerd out about certain topics or you can keep simplistic on others. And I think that's really what it's all about is just you know reading and writing about the topic. So if I'm just going to go recap those five points for you, if you want to work in whiskey, here's my five top points. Work out what kind of role you'd be best suited to. If you're extroverted in front of a crowd, if you see 120 people pouring into a tasting room and you love the idea of talking to them and educating them and having a great time with them, you're probably best suited to being an ambassador. No, not all all these jobs are gonna be necessarily easy to get, but at least set your goals a bit on those ones. You might be best as a brand manager, a designer, an event specialist, a travel retail specialist, a bartender. Find your niche in whiskey. Uh, get involved was my second point and get out there meet people make it 80 percent it use Pareto's law here for those who like this kind of stuff make 80 percent of what you do offline do events shaking hands going to bars meeting bartenders meeting brand managers offer to buy them lunch you know there's all sorts of things like that um taste assess critique discover and keep your own notebook learn from those around you and write 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 read and write Oh, I've been talking nonstop for 20 minutes. There you go. So that's um, that was where I wanted to start tonight. And there's not much more I want to go over. It's not a big stream on Friday nights. It's often just a, a recap and a bit of a, a cheeky topic. Does any questions you want to throw at me? Um, uh, now would be a good time to ask them. Um, yeah, there is an SMWS tasting notebook, Monarch Perth. And as Muzz says, it's in the, the members' welcome pack. Uh, these green boxes up here ha- have them in them. Um, but... Uh, yeah, there's some there's some changes coming there though, and that's that's exciting. And the, the current packs have just had a redesign. Uh, well, they've had the new livery added, and I think there'll be uh, more to discuss at this point later. Um, but um, yeah, that's a that's a cool sort of first point. Um, any other questions coming in? Low whiskey joined. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, and this is uh this is the Friday stream. As I said, a, a chance for us to sit down. And I've been asked so many times in my journey about uh, how do I get a job in whiskey. And you know there will come. There will be different points of sacrifice and different points of um, working out where you best placed in that, where you're best placed in that, and what kind of work you're you're most interested in, and and what kind of work you'll feel like you'll contribute the most to. And this is the kind of stuff that I find fascinating uh, because it's 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 a it's a chance for you to use this use the platform as a journey. And by the way, by the way, it should go without saying. But honestly, the people that I've worked with, the people that I've met, the members that I get to interact with on a weekly, if not daily basis, actually daily basis, especially online, uh, is it's the best place, it's the best industry to be in. It really is. It's one of the most supportive and um, uh, fantastic sort of industries to be a part of. And it's it's such a friendly community always. Everyone's just, it's, um, you know, everyone has a good time and everyone, and everyone enjoys what we do. And that's what it's about. It's not about getting drunk. It's not about over-consuming. It's, it's about whiskey appreciation and finding uh, ways to, to share that with the world. And I, and, I, um, and I just, I really, the more I can hammer that point home, uh, I can't say enough about that, to be honest, but I could be just, you know. Um, yeah, one more point, Muzz. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Persist. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Well, it's a, that's a good question from the Society in the UK. Uh, how did I get my start in whiskey? Well, it was a combination of those five things, really, there, um, SMWS UK. Um, it was a combination of just um, wanting a change from... I, I came from the music industry, um, and I wanted a change from working in, in music to working in um, working in whiskey. And I was a whiskey lover. I, I loved I loved single-cask whiskey. I loved malt whiskey in general. And I loved learning about it as I in my journey. And uh, it was actually... it's. It's the people that help you along the way. It's that that network you build up around you. One of those people is, in fact, watching right now, which is Muzz. Big shout out to you. You're a huge part of my whiskey journey, but you already knew that. And and people as well like um, Dave Withers, who was a huge part of my journey and still is today. Uh, Andrew Durbage, who was a huge part. And um, look, I'm, I'm going to put a list together uh, up online shortly about all this stuff because I'm really quite passionate about that. But there are a number of people who have been a huge part of my me learning to where I've gotten today, and it was it was also people like Ian McK- uh, Ian and Lorraine McKinley uh, were were a huge part of early part of my journey, um, and, and some oh and some dear friends uh, Kirsten Laurie as well and uh, 
look, lots of people I could name who, who it was just sort of the, the network around that sort of built uh, the professional network that you build around, which is, which become good friends for life as well, which is just, it's beautiful. And um, yeah, the, these sort of, that's the, sort of my, the, the basis of my journey is that that's where I started from. And I, I did some work for a few different places and uh, learned a few things and discovered so much about it all. And then, uh, and then the society knocked on my door and said, we're looking for an ambassador and we're sort of the conversation sort of turned and moved a bit and it took about three or four months. But um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And I, and I really, um, I'm still hugely appreciative for being where I am today and what I, what I do for the SMWS and what I'm able to provide for members. And um, honestly, that's, we're here for our members. That's, that's the long and the short of it. Um, Hillwood, thank you so much. Muzzman, thank you. And um, thank you, SMWS UK, for that awesome question. It might need a whole nother video to itself, really, that one. It's, a, it's an interesting one, isn't it? But um, that's all from me tonight. Thank you so much. Happy Fridays. Ha- hope you all have a marvelous weekend. Have a lovely dram tonight. Uh, and uh, think of me. And um, I'll be sharing it with you online at least. And um, uh, I'll catch you all on the other side. I'm going to take this mic off and I've got to do that thing and run around to the other side of the camera. But um, cheers and have a great weekend. <laughs>